section We have uh, created your session, right? Flash and okay. So after the session, we will be creating a flash. So flow will be this one. Right. So what are the first things? First one is your creating property rule. Okay. And next one is the section rule to design the user interface. And then we are going to create a play action rule. So the reason why I'm creating a play action rule is so here uh, we are not performing any actions, right? So we are just designing the UI. Okay. So if you want to uh, just put some action <coughs> into the process, then you are going to create a flag handle. Basically, the actions like you are going to perform some operations. Okay? So in the flow action group, that could be, let's say, you want to do certain validation. Okay? So the validation rule we are going to create, but the configuration you are going to do within the flow action group. Okay? So in the section, we will be doing only the uh, setting a property properties okay not uh, so the UI properties only we are configuring okay so we will not be doing any server side uh, action within the section rule okay so flow action where are we going to create that under process category we are going to create So this particular play action rule we are going to create on that process category. Okay. Or we are going to create on the process rule type. Right. Okay. We want to restart. Another window should be there, so it is closed. We cannot launch. Okay. We have to restart this.
इन जगह में तुम्हें वेबन रिश्ता करता हूँ
So we have created a section. Let us create play action. Okay, so play action rule we are going to create under process category. Action. As usual, we are going to provide the name. So we are going to select a section here, right within the play action. Why? Because we are performing the actions with respect to the UI, right? So that particular UI we are going to choose. So at this moment we are not configuring any other thing. So simply we are just configuring the section within a play action and save that play action. And after creating a play action, design the flow by down creating a flow. Creating a flow. Flow rule can be created under process category. can be used to design the application structure. Flow is used to design the application structure. And this rule can be created under process category. This rule can be created under process category. Okay, let's create a flow diagram. Okay, we will be specifying it. diagrams or uh, like UML, okay, maybe if you have uh, heard about this, UML diagrams right when you are designing your uh, class structure or some um, algorithm we are going to define, right? So in that situation what we used to do, we used to take certain uh, shapes, right, for condition, okay? So all those things, even in the flow also, uh, we are going to design the workflow diagram. So in the workflow diagram, we are having so many shapes, okay? So like uh, for condition, you have one shape, okay? For configuring UI, you have one shape. So like that, in the workflow design, we used to have lots of workflow shapes, okay? So let me show you that.
process flow. Okay, so we have different uh, types of shapes. Okay, so by default, you are having one start shape. So each and every flow should have the starting shape. So here, the start shape is going to basically start your from uh, I mean where you want to start the actual flow. So this is the start shape, and here you have this particular symbol. Red circle is the end shape. So between whatever that we are going to configure, so we used to call them as different steps. Okay. So from starting to end shape, you are configuring. Okay. Some a kind of actions into the workflow design. Okay. So all the actions, whatever that we are configuring within the flow diagram, they are going to process as per the configuration, as per the design that we have done within the workflow diagram. So here we have lots of shapes. So you, you see there are a lot of shapes available, workflow shapes. So here this is the start shape and this could be the assignment shape. That means if you want to display the user interface to the application user. So th then we are going to configure the UI within the assignment shape. Okay, in the design, if you want to launch the user interface, so where are we going to uh, launch it? Using the assignment shape. And this is the end shape, where your process is going to end. Okay? And like that, we have uh, so many shapes. Okay? As I meant, just discuss that if you want to configure the UI, you are going to use this. And decision, the conditions, if you want to configure, if you want to call the condition so then we are going to use this particular shape sub process is if you want to call the sub flows okay we are calling one flow into another flow so if all, if at all you want to call one flow from another flow we are going to use the sub process and utility is we are writing so many business logic okay the utilities so you are going to configure that business logic within the utility shape and start a name. So there are lots of uh, smart shapes are there. So these shapes are not available in the previous versions. Okay. So if you want to, uh, if you want to use this particular shape uh, logic, so in previous versions you have to configure the rules. Okay. We used to create a rules again. So again they made it shortcut and they have just provided the simple configuration with by providing the uh, shapes. Okay, so if you want to write, if you want to create PDF, right, you want to do an attachment. Earlier we used to do little configuration. So, but now you don't have to do that configuration. Directly you can use the shape when it is required. Like sending an email, okay. If you want to update, we used to call some other thing. So update case, you are going to try to configure some rule, okay. So a lot of again configuration stuff is going to reduce by introducing this advanced shapes okay and here we have uh, some more shapes like if you want to work with integrations we are going to go with the advanced shapes okay so, so we have what we are going to do between the start and end we are going to define lot of process by configuring different rules okay so we just created one UI Okay, we are going to launch that particular UI. So where are we going to configure? Which shape we are going to use? Assignment shape. And where are you going to configure that user interface? That is section. Okay, so we are going to, and in the flow we are not configuring sections. Okay, we are configuring only the flow actions. Why? Because flow action is holding again a section rule, right? So, and flow action, we have the actionable items. So, where are we going to consider the flow action is in the outgoing connector. These are all the connector. So, this connector is connecting one shape to another shape. Okay. So, from assignment shape, outgoing connector, we are going to consider the flow action. Okay. So, for every assignment shape, if you want to launch the user interface, you need to take the assignment shape. 
and outgoing connector of the assignment shape you are going to configure the action. So right click on that connector or double click and view properties. So here you can see set of properties and as per our requirement we are going to configure the different rules into that purpose. So here we are configuring the fly action. So let us say select the fly action that you want to launch. Okay. We are going to select the customer form info that is the fly action and fly action is again holds the section only right so you no need to configure again the section but any UI related changes where are we going to do within the section rule only okay now we have configured the fly action after creating a flow what is the last step you are going to create a work object that means you are going to generate an instance for this work, right? When you run this particular flow, okay? So for that, if you want to generate an instance for this particular process or work, you go to the process and there is something like create a new work object. That means it is going to generate one instance. It is going to generate one work object ID, case ID, request ID, okay? automatically we are we are allowing the system to create that okay so once you select that option you can save that flow okay so save the flow Okay, write down. When we run a flow, when we run a flow, a work object will be created. When we run a flow, a work object will be created at the start shape of a flow and it reaches to end shape and it reaches to end shape on its way on its way completing all the steps in the flow completing all the steps in the flow okay so what is that this is going to complete from starting to starting shape and it is going to end to the end shape right in between it is going to complete all the steps as for the logic okay next line right now each work object will be each work object will be uniquely identified uniquely identified by an id called by an ID called case ID work ID or PY ID okay so so in technically in PRPC terminology we used to call this okay the instance that we are going to generate when you create a work this is simple like let's say if you want to apply for any loan so what you are going to do you just fill the loan application form right so as soon as you uh, fill the form and submit it you are going to get one unique 
instant side that is reference side so similarly as soon as you call the customer care so customer care what they are going to do they will open the whatever the request that we want to create so as soon as you they fill and they are going to give you the so we have generated a request id so can you note down so they are going to give us a request id right so that is what this work id case id in different way with. so work id we used to call in prp6 versions so case id we used to call in seven versions and py id is the technical term prp is a technical term so how we are going to generate that by running this flow rule okay so when we run the flow so this is a, a sample one uh, so just uh, forget about this now we are going to look later this is a different topic so simply you can skip this one and click, click on create and this is not going to display when you run at the end user perspective okay so this is the original form which is going to display when you run the application okay so we have designed the ui right and everything is pre-configured here so we have not created a buttons okay cancel save submit and we have not created there is something on top so some template is going to be configured so right so in prpc all these things we have not designed right so this is a predefined template which is available in the prpc so whenever you configure some ui and this is the default template that you are going to see okay this is the default template along with the buttons okay so whatever that you are going to see in between here only this one and this particular area is our designer area okay whatever that we have designed okay and when you submit the form and as i uh, said right there is the work uh, id or case ID or something is going to generate. Okay. As soon as you create a flow, as soon as you create a particular application, this is going to generate a, a unique work object ID. Okay. And this is the combination of like this. We are creating in Pega 7, I said right, we call it as a case ID. So by default, in the configuration, they have given the, the starting point okay is a c dash always whatever the flow that you are going to run it is going to start with c dash okay and hmm. and this one is a unique id okay every time it is going to increase with value one okay so this is going to give you the complete one we call it as in technical term py id we call it as okay so user perfect perspective we call it as a case id or request ID okay so in C uh, in Pega 6 version it is going to start always with W because we pronounce it as a work ID okay it is going to start the idea as a work and this can be configured let's say customer say I don't want to see or something okay they want to give their own let's say if it is ICSA loan so we are going to create something like ICSA loan and I want to generate some number. Okay, so in that situation, they can give that whatever that they want to add before to the the unique ID. Okay, this is simple and easy configuration that we can do. We don't have to change the logic again. Okay, so we will see that. And that is the unique case ID which is going to generate, and you are going to fill the form. Okay, so let us the form okay. and submit so by default we have cancelled that means you want to cancel immediately or you want to temp save temporarily and again you can save that to the database 
or submit means it is the changes are going to save into the database. So now we have created the request, right? So it is, as soon as it is created, you are going to get some kind of a welcome message, right? Thanks for submitting your request, something we will get back to you or we are working on your request and we will get back to you soon something. So in the process oriented, everything is pre-configured and this is one of the template again. Okay, so here it is going to give you what's your case ID, okay, what is the status of that, when it is created, who is working on that particular case. So the metadata of that particular case information, you can see within the confirmation window, okay. So this is how you are actually designing and we are going to run a simple page. So in real time, we are going to design the complex flow diagram. So between the start and end, we are going to have lots of shapes that we are configuring, okay, as per the requirement. So this is simple form that we are running using flow, okay. So next, as soon as you run the flow, okay, so end user is not going to run like this. As a developer, we are running it, okay. We will see that how the basically uh, end users are running the application. So this particular one is the launching page, okay? Every time this is going to be the default and you don't worry about that. Just skip this and create a, okay? And this one is the assignment, okay? This particular one is the assignment. So here we have actually configured the UI, right? So where our data is going to save. So first time we just fill right, we have submitted the data and where actually the data is going to store in the first time. So data in PRPC, the first time, as soon as you create an instance, okay, the very first time it is going to store into clipboard. Okay, this is going to store the data into clipboard. Okay, clipboard is a kind of a just temporary storage area. And this is going to store whatever that you are running currently. So it is kind of a, a temporary storage area and which is going to hold whatever the running application, whatever the current application that you are running at that time. That particular data is available on the clipboard. Okay. So before saving into the database, the data is available temporarily on the clipboard. Okay. It is just a visual representation of your work object data. That means this is there, it is going to display what is the first name, what is the last name, every property and its value, you can see that on the clipboard pages, on the clipboard view. So how you can open the clipboard view? In the bottom you can see there is something called clipboard, right? Open the clipboard. So once you click on that, it is going to open a tool, a small tool or a page and that is called the clipboard here. So in the clipboard here, we have so many pages, okay? So each page which is going to hold the current running application data, okay? So we have, we are running the PRPC application. There is so much uh, data is running, right? And we logged in into one user and we logged in into one of the application and we logged in into one organization, right? So all those, current running application data is available on the clipboard pages. So what is this clipboard is? The clipboard is kind of a debugging tool. Okay, it is kind of a debugging tool which you are going to see the visual representation of your work object data. Let's say you are saving some data into the database and something is goes wrong in the database. So where are you going to see that particular data? how the data is transforming, okay, what value which is actually is going to save. If you don't have the database access, so how can you see that particular data? We cannot see the particular data, right? What data? You are going to debug. In programming, what you used to do? If you want to see what data is actually taking, you debug and see each and every property value, okay? So if you want to see each and every property value, they have introduced kind of a clipboard. Okay, whatever the data that you are submitting, 
that particular data you can see within a clipboard. So in the clipboard we have so many pages. Okay, so we have pages on the clipboard. So each page is going to hold some information. Okay, related to the application. So here, this we call it as a page. Whatever that you can see is content sketch page. And that corresponding class is this one. Each page is correspond to at least one class on the clipboard. So what is this is? In the object oriented programming, you are creating uh, references, right? You are creating an object for one of the class. How you are creating that? Class object is equal to have you seen this syntax? So you are going to create an object of a class. Similarly, we are going to create one reference, one page for each class. Okay? Depends on your requirement. If you want to debug the particular class, or uh, if you are debugging an application, if you want to see that particular information on the clipboard, what you are going to do? You are going to create a reference first. So that you can see that that particular class objects within the page. Okay. So if you click on this, you can see some properties right here. You are seeing the page properties. Okay. And that respective value. Okay. So in PRPC, we have we were running our page, right? What is that? customer page. So where our information is stored, they definitely it is going to store one of the pages in the clipboard, right? So that page is called a PY work page. Okay? So that page, the work related information is going to store within the PY work page on the clipboard. Okay? So we have not entered any value in the UI, right? That's why the values for corresponding properties are empty. Okay? Because we have not entered anything. If you enter, okay? If you enter something, let's say submit now. So we can see that data. Just refresh this particular clipboard page. Okay, now you can see that. So clipboard is holding the current running application data. So what is the purpose of using this clipboard? It is a kind of a debugging tool. Let's say you want to, we are doing so much uh, business logic, right? Let's say you are calculating A plus B and you want to see whether that A plus B value is perfectly calculating. So you are doing some transformation, okay? So you want to see the final value is what I am expecting. Okay, if something goes wrong, you can verify it here. And you don't have to verify in the database because each and everybody do not have the access for the database, right? So they cannot see that what data is actually stored into database. So only place you can verify that particular information is on the clipboard. Okay? Right now, clipboard. It is one of the main debugging tool in PRBC. It is one of the main debugging tool in PRBC. Come on. Which is the which is the visual representation of which is the 
visual representation of work objects data. Which is the visual representation of work objects data. Next slide. The currently running application. Next one. The currently running application. is held on to the the currently running application is held on to the clipboard of pages clipboard pages each page on the clipboard each page on the clipboard must refer to one class. Must refer to one class. <coughs> Next slide on py one page. So here everything is case sensitive, okay? In DRPC. PY work page. It is the UI page. It is the UI page created on the clipboard. Created on the clipboard. by a process commander comma which holds which holds all the data related to UI which holds all the data related to UI okay so what does it mean in on the clipboard we have a page and corresponding to one class okay this is similar in java or any dotnet or any other object oriented programming if you want to create an object for one class what we used to write the syntax is the class name object is equal to new class name okay new class name so similarly object is called the page name and this particular is referred to here it is a class name so this particular class object is what this one so in prpc we call it as a pages as i said prpc having its own terminology okay they are not going to use the terminology from java or any object oriented programming okay they want to have their own terminology on the so that's why each class, each page on the clipboard must refer to at least one class. Okay, this is the page name and which page name is that? Which class page name? The particular class. Okay, so all these are all the PRPC classes. Okay, all these are all the PRPC classes. Maybe as soon as you launch your applications or as soon as you log in into your application. So for now, py workpage i said everything is a temporarily right so let's say if i close this particular application we still open red right and it's you are just closing it and let's say you go to the clipboard and refresh okay just reopen it now we don't see that particular clipboard page on the Okay, so there is no py work page. You see this? So this is just temporarily until you run your application. As soon as you close that, that page is going to remove from the clipboard page. I mean the clipboard. Okay, so this is temporary area. Now, if you see, there are lots of properties. 
right? We have created our own properties like first name, last name, age, everything, right? And even in the PRPC pages or even in our PY work page, you could see a lot of properties here, right? Each property is going to start with PX, okay? And again, some properties are starting with PY and again, some properties having PZ. Okay, these are all the PRPC predefined process properties. Okay, so whenever you are creating a property in your application and that particular property or any rule, not only the property, any rule that you are creating in PRPC, that should not always start with PX, PY, PZ. Okay, so these are all the system defined. We cannot create any property or any rule starting with PX, PY, PZ. So these are all just for, you can use these properties, but we cannot create a property starting with PX, PY, PZ. So that means you are going to follow some naming conventions. Okay, we are going to follow some naming convention. So naming convention for every uh, program or every application should have like, so they have their own naming convention, right? Every letter should start with caps. Okay, every property should start with small, something like. So similarly, here also we are going to follow some uh, naming conventions. And one of the naming convention is that always the property should not start with. Okay? PX, PY, PZ. That is one of the rules. Okay? If you try to create any rule with PX, PY, PZ, this will throw an error. Okay? So it should not start with PX, PY, PZ. And there are some importance also for using this. Okay, we are going to use these properties into your application. Okay, whenever they are required. Let's say you want to use one of the property value. So definitely you are going to read that particular property value, right? So what are that uh, PX, PY, PZ? And we will see that tomorrow. Okay, so those are all the predefined properties. PRPC, predefined properties. And the purpose of each one, PX, PY, PZ, we will see how we can use in our application. Any questions? A particular data, data which was saved as well. Right. Yes. It's just a debugging area. Okay. Okay. So let's see tomorrow this one. Okay. Thanks for joining. Yeah, we can do it.